afternoon. This is Dr. Bo Clark, East Baton Rouge Parish Corner. I should say good morning. Uh, we're going to go live uh, now, but we're going to spend the next few minutes kind of just waiting uh, so people can uh, log on to the video. Um, hopefully, what we'll be able to do is um, accomplish uh, answering some questions that people might have after uh, I go through a few items uh, that are necessary this morning. So let me get my computer set up so that we can uh, begin this press conference. Looks like we have a few people joining us. As an aside, if you have any friends out there or family or anybody interested in watching the conference, uh, make sure they're on the uh, East Baton Rouge Parish Corners Office Facebook page. Uh, I do have another Facebook page that's related to my campaign, uh, which is Bo Clark EBR Corner. Uh, it will not be uh, posted there uh, until later. We are now uh, uh, using the, the Facebook page associated with the office. I'm going to give you just a few more minutes for people to log on. All right, uh, like I said, this is Dr. Bo Clark, the East Baton Rouge Parish Corner. Um, this morning, uh, we're going to host a virtual conference, press conference. Uh, of course, the reason we're doing this is the, uh, the pandemic of the coronavirus that we're in the midst of. Um, we're going to try to use this technology so that we can uh, not only relay information to the public, uh, but also uh, try to answer any questions anybody uh, might be having. Uh, I'm going to hold the question and answer session for the very end after I uh, release some information. Um, but uh, certainly uh, we've been encouraged uh, as a community, as a country, as a parish, as a state uh, to socially distance ourselves from others. So I think this is the best format uh, we can have uh, to ensure that we are keeping everyone safe uh, during a, a pretty scary time uh, that we're having now because of the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, so um, this morning I put out a um, press release describing the, uh, the fact that we've now had uh, two people uh, die in East Baton Rouge Parish as a result of the coronavirus. Uh, the first individual was actually a resident of uh, Mississippi, uh, was moved to a hospital uh, in our parish uh, and unfortunately has died as a result of the virus. Uh, the second individual was an East Baton Rouge Parish resident that has died of the virus. Uh, and these are the first two deaths that we've seen uh, in our community. Certainly there are many, many, many people that have been uh, infected uh, and are currently uh, either undergoing quarantine or undergoing uh, hospitalization and measures to try to save their lives. Um, I inform you of this because what you have to understand is the importance uh, of uh, keeping yourself safe during this time. Uh, when you see the president, you see the governor, you see the mayor uh, mention the fact that we should uh, certainly uh, be in isolation, uh, whether that be staying at home and not making any unnecessary trips uh, other than to go to the grocery and, and do the things that you need to sustain your life. Uh, practice social distancing if you are going to get together in a group of people. Uh, make sure that it's uh, limited to a few people. Um, really trying to avoid uh, um, close contacts. Uh, and then practicing good hygiene where you um, where you clean your hands, clean the surfaces around you, uh, use disinfectants 
Um, certainly, uh, uh, wear protective thing, uh, things such as gloves or masks if you find yourself uh, potentially in a contact uh, situation. Um, so uh, it is very unfortunate that now we're having to report these deaths uh, of these individuals. Uh, we knew this day would come eventually because this virus is incredibly um, virulent in the fact that it is uh, uh, passed pretty aggressively and pretty rapidly amongst people. And that's why social distancing uh, and protecting yourself is so important. So when you are getting uh, notices from the government to do this, I think you should take that very seriously uh, to protect yourself and to also protect others. Um, we do know that the vast majority of folks uh, uh, that get this disease will survive it. Um, you will have the illness uh, for a short period of time and then probably get over it. Uh, but we do have a very vulnerable population uh, out there, uh, people with comorbid diseases uh, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, lung diseases like COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, um, people that have chronic lung illnesses, smokers, um, all those folks, if they get this respiratory illness, can have a very challenging tr time uh, trying to um, fight, uh, fight off the infection. Uh, so for those people's sake, it's very important that we, um, we protect ourselves so we can protect them. Uh, so like I said, uh, we're uh, in a very interesting place uh, in our community, in our society now, uh, where we've now had to quarantine ourselves uh, to prevent uh, the spread of this disease. Uh, but I want you to understand the, the, the reality of that, um, which has to do with the fact that now uh, uh, we're seeing people that are, are dying as a result of that. I know this is uh, uh, happening statewide. We've heard reports from other parishes, um, but this is the, uh, the first two deaths that we're here to report in East Baton Rouge Parish. So having said that, uh, I'll do my best. Uh, uh, we're new to doing Facebook Live press conferences. Um, I'm gonna try to read the questions as they come across and answer them the best I can. Um, but what I want to, uh, and we'll do that for a few minutes uh, before we then go offline. Uh, again, I'd remind everybody, please stay safe. Please stay conscientious about uh, your hygiene. Please um, uh, uh, keep, your, keep your family safe um, and uh, really avoid uh, doing anything that puts you in a position where you might uh, come into contact uh, with folks. So uh, I'm going to go over and look at uh, where we're having. Uh, if you just want to post your, uh, your questions there, I'll do my best to try to, uh, to uh, answer them. Uh, so a question came up that said, if the person is a Mississippi resident, how did it end up being an East Baton Rouge Parish Coroner's case? Uh, Louisiana law directs us uh, that if a person is brought from out of state into uh, Louisiana, uh, then the corner of jurisdiction becomes the corner in which the death occurs. Uh, so the, um, the uh, Mississippi case then becomes the East Baton Rouge Parish Coroner's case because the death occurred here. Um, I saw another question just recently someone asked, uh, did the 44-year-old woman uh, have any underlying health issues? The answer to that is yes, she did. Um, what we're seeing is that most people that uh, do not have underlying health issues, meaning they're normally healthy, uh, young and middle-aged people, uh, will get a mild to moderate version of the illness and will typically survive it. It's the at-risk population that we get concerned about. Uh, and we see that more commonly in the elderly population, people above the age of 70. Uh, so those folks are the ones that we really need to be caring for uh, at this time. Uh, if you have an elderly neighbor, uh, a parent, um, an aunt or uncle, um, have them stay at home. Even it would be best if you went grocery shopping for them. Send them a text, ask them to give you their, their grocery list and go take care of it. Anything you can do to check on them, uh, but keep your distance. Remember, you have to isolate them because they're most at risk uh, in, uh, for catching this. What about asthma? Is that a uh, any un, uh, the question is, is uh, could it be related to asthma? Uh, yes, asthma is an underlying lung disease. Anything that uh, has hindered the respiratory system uh, can get overwhelmed fairly rapidly uh, from an infectious uh, agent such as the coronavirus or COVID-19. 
Uh, so it's important uh, for any of those underlying conditions uh, to be monitored very closely uh, so that uh, they don't uh, get infected. Do you think the high composites has anything to do with um, the ability to test in commercial test lab? Right, so uh, the question is, is do I think there's uh, been a high positive test? Well, I think there's been an increase in the number of positive tests because we're probably testing more people. And by testing more people, those numbers are going to grow. Uh, and so that's why when you hear the public, uh, our public officials talk about the increase in, in numbers, we expect to see an increase in numbers. The more we test, the more we're going to find that it's out in the community. Uh, and that's why it's very important for us to, uh, to uh, have those preventative measures because you could be positive and have uh, mild to moderate symptoms uh, but then you accidentally transmit it to someone who fits one of those high-risk categories and uh, they can't fight it off as well as you do. Uh, so you have, um, you have an issue there. Uh, someone says, how much more of a risk that smokers have? Um, if you have an issue, uh, uh, anything that infects or, or, or hurts the lungs uh, can create an issue where you uh, uh, can f cannot fight the virus as easily. And that would be true whether we're talking about coronavirus or the flu or any other respiratory illness. Uh, so uh, smoking certainly is not good for, um, for that measure. Hey, uh, Chris Nakamoto asked which hospital? Um, the hospitals uh, that we've interacted with uh, have been, um, uh, our, our, our Lady Lake have been both, uh, both cases that we had. Chris Nakamoto. Yeah. And that was uh, from Chris Nakamoto. Hope that answers your question. Correct. Right now, they have set criteria, and this is the CDC that has set criteria in regards to um, who should be tested and who should not be tested. What they're really looking for uh, is they're starting with symptoms. Uh, so we're looking at fever, cough, and shortness of breath being the three major symptoms uh, that we are working with as far as um, getting to, uh, to the, that testing modality. Then we're going to look at next to that, which category do you fit into? Are you a high risk population, meaning that you have, um, that you have a propensity for uh, getting the coronavirus and it being uh, uh, pretty profound uh, and, and, and detrimental to your life versus someone who could still get it, uh, but should self quarantine and, and would potentially, uh, most probably, uh, get over the illness uh, and recover from it. Um, and that's because of the limited uh, number of tests that we have currently. Now, that's, as that expands, I'm sure we'll be expanding testing for a lot more people. Leah Skeen with the Advocate asked if we have another case we're working on, we're waiting on records, or it's pending. So there's a question about a, a, another pending case. We do have another pending case. Um, this is an individual that doesn't have a typical presentation uh, where we're seeing someone present with fever, cough, and shortness of breath, and then going to the hospital and subsequently testing positive uh, for COVID-19. Our third pending case, we have not got the results of the COVID test back yet, um, but we uh, have checked today. We should have results in a few days, um, and uh, certainly we'll report that back uh, if, in fact, that death is determined to be a result of uh, COVID-19. Leah Skeen, also with the advocate, asked about how long these folks were in the hospital before they passed. Uh, varying degrees. Uh, uh, Ten weeks to two days. Um, uh, have we seen some of these individuals? Uh, some have been uh, less than that. Um, so it, it, the the body reacts differently um, when you are in these high risk categories, meaning you're you have these underlying uh, comorbidities, and those are the ones that uh, create a, a scenario where uh, you can't recover quite as fast. Nikki wrote. Roche once infected and recovered, can you get it again? So as, as far as we know, once you're infected and recover, uh, then your body should have built natural immunity to COVID-19. Uh, and so uh, they don't know for sure whether you can get reinfected, but uh, just on the basis of, of medicine and science and your, uh, your immunologic system, you should have a scenario where you... Um, where you, you would then have an immunity and not worry about getting infected again. Uh, so uh, we just don't know that definitively yet, but that should be the, should be the case. What would disqualify qualify you from donating blood? Active infection? Yeah, probably active infection. I mean, you'd have to check, uh, this is a question about uh, donating blood. 
Um, I would imagine if you had active infection, they probably uh, wouldn't, wouldn't want that. Um, however, I would, I would call the blood bank before you made that determination uh, and uh, see what, the, what protocols they have in place. I'm not sure exactly what their protocols are. Uh, somebody asked a question about testing centers being open. As far as I know, they are. I know the one here in East Baton Rouge Parish is at the Baton Rouge General. Uh, but you shouldn't just go there. You should um, uh, contact your primary care physician by phone, discuss with them the symptoms, uh, and then seek advice on how to uh, proceed from there. Uh, Ms. Kimberlyn Scott, you had a question you, you needed answered. While we're waiting, Leah Skeen asked, oh, Leah Skeen asked, when can you expect to release the names of these two patients? Uh, the question is, is when can we expect to release the names of the patients? We are keeping track on a list of those names. Uh, and we certainly, uh, when the time is appropriate, we will uh, release those names as they are uh, uh, public records. But we're compiling that list now. Uh, we are also in communication with the state of Louisiana Department of Health. Uh, so they're aware of the deaths that occur at the parish level uh, because they're offering surveillance statewide. Um, I've been asked, you know, if you go to the state's website uh, and they're updating the, this, these numbers, I don't know how often they update them. I'm sure they are, have some kind of measure where they're updating probably daily. Um, but uh, before I even released my press release today, I did notify the state of Louisiana of the two deaths uh, that are classified here in East Baton Rouge Parish. Did she repeat her question? Do we know? The two, the two deaths did present with typical signs and uh, presentations as, we, as we've seen with, uh, with other uh, COVID uh, uh, patients. Tell Alessandra Cashew hello. Hello, how to stay safe with our husbands working in plants around thousands of people. So staying safe around people. So I know there's a lot of folks that are essential to how we continue to uh, work in our community. Uh, have to go to work. Our first responders, our law enforcement, folks that are in the energy business, such as uh, plants, that we kind of keep uh, the community going. Um, those folks, are, it's certainly necessary for them to, to continue to go to work, uh, to, keep, uh, to keep things uh, going in our community. Uh, we recommend to them, certainly if they are sick, if you have any of these symptoms, you should probably notify your work. Uh, and I imagine at that time, they will probably tell you not uh, to come into work. Um, if, they, uh, if, they, um, if you're not sick, then I think I would practice the same social distancing at work as best you can around the people you work with. Uh, but if you're sick, I would recommend that you contact your employer uh, and not attend work. If you can work remotely, and I know a lot of people in the communities I just listed or the, the occupations I just listed can't do that. They have to go to work. But uh, if there's a, the chance that you can work remotely, uh, then that is the consideration and recommendation by uh, our government. Chris Nakamoto asks, is the infection still alive in deceased patients? So the infection, as far as we know, uh, can still be uh, uh, alive uh, on surfaces up to three days uh, is what the CDC has kind of put out. Um, and uh, that's why it's so important to disinfect those surfaces. Uh, they can be alive in the deceased person uh, after, the, uh, uh, after their death, and so we take universal precautions by wearing our protective equipment anytime we're handling uh, bodies, uh, and we take even extra precautions uh, in a case that we suspect is related to COVID. It looks like a lot of the questions that are coming in right now have uh, uh, been answered earlier on in the video. Uh, so uh, if you would uh, go back and you, hopefully you can see those uh, by watching the replay. A um, couple of things, uh, if we have any further information to get out to the public, we're gonna use this format uh, to protect 
uh, you all to protect us uh, because we still have work uh, to, do, to continue to do as first responders. Um, I would also like to let everybody know to stay safe out there, take these precautions seriously. I know it's really easy to think, oh, well, I'm just going to go do this or go do that, but really you need to protect yourself. Uh, we need to protect our at-risk populations. Uh, help a neighbor out if you can uh, by getting the groceries for them or checking on them, make sure they're okay, but remember to keep uh, distance from them. Uh, and then lastly, uh, certainly my condolences uh, to the families who've now, uh, the two families in, in, in this community that have lost loved ones as a result of this pandemic. Um, we certainly send our prayers, my prayers uh, to them. Uh, and we're always here available to those families or any families. Uh, if you need further information, feel free to, to call our office 225-389-3047. We'll be happy to help you. Uh, and, and walk you through uh, any process that we can. So I'm going to sign off for now, uh, and we'll be back with more information when it becomes available.